Next is Mesolithic age. So the age uh, roughly between the 12,000 years to 6,000 years before Christ's uh, existence. That age is known as the Mesolithic age. So here the important we can say differentiation is the development of microliths. Microliths are small stone tools. Right. So small geometrically shaped stone tools that is the peculiar uh, we can say characteristic feature of the Mesolithic age. Right. So they, they often hafted into uh, implements like spears and harpoons. So this in this way they have been more efficient for hunting and other purposes. Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus AS. Right, today is our 58th day and we are in history. Uh, today we will study about the prehistoric India. So yesterday's topic, I think it has, I mean, it should have been discussed before this topic. However, I uh, believe that uh, Indus Valley civilization is most, most important that two questions are being repeatedly asked from the sides uh, of the Indus Valley civilization. So because of that reason, I discussed this first. So if we see the chronologically, if we see the chronological order, we should uh, discuss this first, the prehistoric India. However, uh, we are discussing it now. This is also a very important topic. We can say these are topics like prehistoric India, Indus Valley civilization. These are favorite topics for the examiners, especially prelims examination. I mean here, several uh, curious things are there that uh, the examiner uh, will feel interesting to ask so put the questions from here so that's why we should be thorough so in this topic we are going to see the features of particular areas sorry the ages and also apart from that we are going to cover the important sites also we are going to cover here in the Indus Valley civilization I did not cover the features of the Indus Valley civilization because it is a most popular topic. You might have covered uh, that topic in your regular preparation. So that's why I did not cover the uh, Indus Valley civilization. So as part of your art and culture preparation, you should read thoroughly about the Indus Valley and its culture, etc. So that's why I did not cover. Uh, so here in prehistoric India, I am covering both these uh, important features of those particular ages and al along with that i am going to discuss the important sites also right so prehistory just uh, briefly we try to understand what is meant by prehistory so history if you see history is generally known as so if an era about a particular age if we have the literary sources i mean the sources uh, which are written which are in the written form especially books books whether it may be books whether it may be inscriptions so if we have these type of type of evidences that is that period is known as historic period right so uh, let's say when it comes to indian history from the time of uh, vedic uh, i mean vedic culture or vedic civilization from the rigvedic period we have the literary sources, I mean the Vedas itself, they serve as the source of information uh, to learn about the Rig Vedic people or for that matter all the Vedic civilization. So that's why from that now then on the history of India, I mean that part from that age it is known as historical part. So after that we have like Vedas also we have to know about the life and uh, I mean the life of the people and also Puranas we have Puranas we have so if we come little bit more forward during the age of Guptas and Mauryas so we have specially dedicated books for uh, the biographies of the rulers and uh, certain several visitors have come they also left a lot of written sources for us so that is that thing is there that's why so since that time it is known as uh, historic period so for the period to study the particular period 
there are no literary sources so that has been named as prehistory that has been known as prehistory right and here there is a peculiar case when it comes to india so for the Ind indus valley civilization it is believed that they have a writing i mean they have a script so whatever the letters that are symbols are there on the seals of the indus valley people so they all have been gathered and it has been identified the identified by the historians that those pictures so whatever the small uh, pictures are there uh, those are nothing but the script of the indus valley civilization so basically they were writing in the form of pictures it is also so they have also named this as pictography pictography however the thing is we are unable to decipher it till now so uh, i mean the historians have said that the indus valley people have a script they have used some form of script in the form of pictures however till now we have unable we we are let's say uh, we can say we have failed to decipher that pit, uh, pictography so there is a script but we are unable to understand that script so that's why indus valley civilization has been named as proto history proto history so that period indus valley civilization period it has been named as the proto history so we have prehistory we have proto history and we have historic period so try to remember these differences uh, you may get a question or it is uh, useful in day to day life also right so now we will see about the prehistor prehistoric india so majorly the <coughs> three rock uh, stone ages so generally it is also known as the stone age right that is old stone age old stone age next is middle stone age middle stone age and new stone age so these are the names however alternately they are also also called as paleolithic age paleo lithic age mesolithic age mesolithic age and neolithic age lith is nothing but stone rock or stone so they can be called as uh, either in this nomenclature or in this nomenclature also old stone age middle stone age and uh, new stone age also or also paleolithic age mesolithic age and uh, neolithic age right so these are the alternative names for the period so whatever the prehistoric period is period is there so broadly the historians divide them into these three major categories also the paleolithic age itself again divided into three another sub categories middle i mean earlier stone age earlier old stone age middle old stone age and a new old stone age like that there is a sub categorization also but it is not that important when you study history as an optional then that becomes important right so apart from that we have another peculiar age when it comes to india or we can see that in another we can say cultures also european culture etc that is age of megaliths or megalithic age megalithic age so this is a peculiar uh, we can say characterization of the period where we will see different and special features and the practices of people so that's why it is making the people i mean making this uh, uh, i mean period a different period apart from uh, that we also see chalcolithic age chalcolithic age so we can say broadly chalcolithic age is the period between the stone age stone age it is a link between the stone age and the bronze age there go and bronze age so it is a uh, we can say uh watershed period between the stone age and uh, bronze age bronze age you know very well it is associated we can say the period of indus valley civilization as the bronze age 
but at that time by that time people were uh, started elaborately started using the bronze bronze metal so that indus valley civilization age is also known as the bronze age where the use of bronze is predominant so before that in between the stone age to be particular to be precise between the ne neo uh, stone age or neolithic age and the bronze age there is use of copper predominant use of copper along with the rock tools or the stone tools so that particular age is as age is known as chalcolithic age so some people say the neolithic is age is nothing but chalcolithic period only so because with the development in the stone tools there were people already started using copper so the neo st neolithic stage itself can be called as chalcolithic age however there are other certain historians they call that the neolithic age is different and the chalcolithic age is different and we have to study them in two different categories so this is there however you remember that neolithic between the period of neolithic and the bronze age there is a peculiar period that is called as chalcolithic age so uh this is about the story of age of uh, civilization division of civilization so after the bronze age bronze age you know very well the iron age has come iron age has come so people have discovered iron and they have started using iron for uh, in all their implements so when it comes to india this iron age can be associated with uh, the rigvedic culture or rigvedic period or for that matter the vedic period vedic period so vedic period is known uh, also known as the iron age the indus valley civilization uh, age we can call it as the bronze age and before that we have a chalcolithic age and before that we have the stone age right so this uh, classification try to remember this classification it is very very useful uh in day to day life and also for from the point of view of examination right so clear i think you have clear one more thing we have to make clear is that so whatever the division in the stone age that is completely made with the based on the stone tools whatever the tools we have got in the excavations based on those tools and the change in the technology of tools change in the technology of stone tools only we have made this classification so in the lower classes during your uh, school uh, schooling period you may have you might have seen the images with the different different stones so in the old stone age you will see uh, big big boulders the stones so people were using those stones only to hunt uh, the animals so when we see the mesolithic age here the latest or new development is development of microliths microliths means small stone uh, stone tools so they have been uh, tied to the spears and uh, they have been uh, along with the uh, wood handles they have these uh, i mean microliths have been used in the form of arrows in the form of axes etc and also harpoons in the form of harpoons and the spears they have been used microliths have been used so that is the development when we see the mesolithic age however in the new neolithic the special characteristic feature is along with the development and the refinement of microliths there there were settled lives or we can say there was settled lifestyle settled lifestyle so in the two about two ages people were just nomads they were wanderers they were uh, continuously changing their uh, place of living so they were just hunter gatherers and they were wanderers so in the neolithic age they have adopted this settled living right they have settled life along with that domestication of uh, animals has also happened so generally the domestication of Uh, animals has already started in the Mes mesolithic age only however in the neolithic age we can see a predominant uh, aspect is improvement or development in the uh, domestication of animals many animals have been 
domesticated by this time so also they have uh, started we can say crude type of agriculture crude type of agriculture has started in the neolithic period so when uh, uh, whoever talks about the neolithic uh, age the special characteristic features are two to three that is one one thing is settled life settled lifestyle domestication of animals and practice of agriculture crude form practice of agriculture here also the pottery has developed pottery has also developed here but it is not wheel turned pottery it is hand turned pottery hand turned pottery so by this time the wheel has not yet discovered or invented by this time so the pottery whatever the pottery has been made that is only hand turned pottery that is hand made pottery so these are broadly the characteristic features of the stone age right so remember the peculiar um, specific characteristics for each and every period right right so these are the broad this is the broad uh, we can say brief explanation brief and broad explanation now we will see uh, study each of uh, about each of them in some detail right first one is paleolithic age that is old stone age it is uh, from roughly from 2.5 million uh, years ago uh, just uh, after the arrival of the human being to 10000 years before so that age is known as paleolithic age if you see this is very 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 considerable period of time here the development or we can say accumulation of the knowledge and accumulation with the things has took lot of time lot of time so in the indian subcontinent the period is from now 2.5 million years to 10000 years before the age is considered as old stone age right stone tools defining feature here is use of to stone tools that to very crude stone tools very big big boulders they were using right right next uh, these are uh, tools can be like hand axes cleavers scrapers points flakes etc limited to tool diversity so whatever the tools they were using there was very limited diversity uh this uh, subsistence they were living a subsistence life i mean they were i mean major focus of the life was to survive so for that they were doing hunting and gathering so they were hunting the animals and they were gathering the uh for a, they were gathering fruits uh we can say some leaves and also some roots from the uh, i mean from, from the forest so in this way they were leading a life of hunter gatherers right so these people were very highly adaptable to the environment so whether it is sunny whether it is raining or whether it is cold they were very much adapted to the environment so generally they were uh, living in the caves natural caves and they were moving from place to place uh, depending on the availability of resources and also they were following the migration paths of animals according to the seasonal changes right this is about the uh, prehistoric sorry paleolithic age so social structure if you see people were living in small bands so because it was difficult for them to live in a huge huge bands because the availability of resources uh, and uh, there can be an attack from the wild and cruel animals so to survive uh, from these things also they were living in a small bands so apart from if a particular number increases it becomes uh, for the we can say the group to control the uh, number of people in that so because of that reason also they were living in small bands right so these bands are very small mobile bands with a few dozen individuals or sometimes it is less than that too right so they had shared responsibilities like male members of the family they used to hunt and a female female uh, their main major responsibility was 
గ్యాదరింగ్ గ్యాదరింగ్ ది ఫారెస్ట్ రిసోర్సెస్ రైట్ సో విమెన్ అండ్ చిల్డ్రన్ మైట్ హ్యావ్ బీన్ ఇన్వాల్వ్ ఇన్ గ్యాదరింగ్ ఫుడ్ ప్రిపరేషన్ అండ్ చైల్డ్ కేర్ ఎక్సెట్రా రైట్ so we will have a limited evidence of art and architecture art and culture development uh, focus on major focus here was on survival only so they were uh, they were using the natural shelter, shelters like caves majorly so they were living in the caves they have might have tried to build a rudimentary i mean crude structures but we cannot find uh, the, the sources of them uh they were mostly they were using the shelters like caves right so if we see the sites of the uh, paleolithic age that to lower paleolithic age so this one is one si- uh, one site uh, hansgi baichabal baichbal valley it is in karnataka karnataka this is one site and uh, narmada valley so in the states of madhya pradesh maharashtra and gujarat in the narmada valley we will see the uh, evidence of lower paleolithic age next is didwana it is there in rajasthan so here also we find out the paleolithic tools so uh, this is also one of the important sites didwana next is singbom in jharkhand uh, this pa- this falls in the eastern part of the country so here also some evidences of lower paleolithic age have been found out right next another another uh, we can say location is belan valley in madhya pradesh so here also some evidence of a lower paleolithic age has been found out right so lower paleolithic age we can see uh, it falls between the 2.5 million years to 2 lakh years ago that is lower paleolithic age if you see the middle paleolithic age it is from 250000 years to 30000 years ago till the and i mean that period can be considered as middle paleolithic age here the important sites are sohan valley it is in west bengal uh, sorry <coughs> present day west bengal we can find it next is attirampakkam it is in southern part of india tamil nadu so this part uh, this site also shows the evidence of medial paleolithic human activity next is valley of pravara in the maharashtra also we will see the some instances of middle paleolithic age next is upper paleolithic sites or we can consider it as 20000 years to 10000 years ago right so evidences have found out at kupgal it is in karnataka so it has yielded very important discoveries uh, right like Uh, stone tools animal bones these are providing very valuable information about the uh, later or upper paleolithic age so here here we can uh, identify one rock shelter at kupgal right apart from that sites like excavations in karnool karnool caves in andhra pradesh belan valley in uttar pradesh and mayurbhanj in odisha they are also have the remnants of uh, upper paleolithic we can say evidence right so these are the important sites next is mesolithic age so the age uh, roughly between the 12000 years to 6000 years before christ's uh, existence that age is known as the mesolithic age so here the important we can say differentiation is the development of microliths microliths are small stone tools right so small geometrically shaped stone tools that is the peculiar how we can say characteristic feature of the mesolithic age right so they they often hafted into uh, implements like spears and harpoons so this in this way they have been more efficient for hunting and other purposes also here we can see the diversification of tools also so different type of tools were used for different type of purposes still they were uh, we we can say doing the subsistence uh, kind of living the subsistence lifestyle only so major we can say concern of the life is to survive so here they were doing same thing hunting hunting and gathering however it has been somewhat refined hunting and gathering has been refined right right 
so uh, seasonal shifts if we see it is i mean the evidence shows that the mesolithic communities they may ha- they might have exhibited more semi nomadic lifestyle following seasonal migrations of animals and plants so based on the migrations of these things animals and plants they has ha- they also followed uh, a kind of semi nomadic life nomadic life they were nomads i mean continuously moving from one one place to another however whenever they are stopping for a particular time that period is considerably more now right so that's why they are known as semi nomadic people right so here if we see the social structure small bands still persist people were uh, in particular band not more than few dozens right so if we see the art and culture here we can find the very very peculiar feature that is rock art right rock art so in crude lines the whatever the art they have drawn is line art so they have used the colors of the leaves leaves and other natural colors to draw these uh, whatever the art is there so they have drawn this art so <coughs> sites we will see later uh, rock art sites and uh, everything bimbetka is very much bimbetka is a very very famous uh, place uh, where the earliest uh, we can say incidents of rock ha- rock art art has been found out we will we will see that right so rock uh, rock art they were drawing like themes based on the themes like hunting scenes animals geometric patterns and uh, possibly ritualistic activities also they were De- they have depicted right so if you see it is a very very beautiful art so everything is art is connected to the life of the people only so if you see in some images they were seen cho- chasing the animal so in some images the animal will be chasing the people and they will be running away so everything is connected to the lifestyle let's say the whatever the art they have produced produced so day to day life Uh, whatever they are experiencing in their in their day to day life so they are uh, depicting that uh, we can say experience in the form of art crude art right all right so shelter if you see uh, they are still dependent on the natural shelters only like caves etc right transitional period so it is often seen as the transition transitional period between the mobile hunter gatherer lifestyle to settled agriculture in the neolithic age so it is a kind of uh, we can say watershed period between the hunter gatherer nomadic lifestyle to settled agricultural lifestyle so sites if we see uh, first are the rock sites uh, uh, rock art sites very very important site is bimbetka rock shelter so it is a world unesco uh, world heritage site uh, recognized as a unesco world heritage site very very important the art whatever they have drawn it is still persisting in these caves right so mostly uh, the themes we can see is hunting scenes animal figures and the geometric patterns so basically majorly they were uh, drawing the lives their lifestyles rituals and the belief systems uh, whatever they have believed they were depicting those things in the rock art right next another important site where we can find the mesolithic art is adamgarh rock shelters of madhya pradesh only so these are also a cl- cluster of rock shelters uh, there is not much di- uh, distance between the uh, bimbetka rocks and adamgarh rocks the i mean rock shelters they are uh, they fall in the close tra- proximity only they are fall in the madhya pradesh state of madhya pradesh right next is another site is there bagor it is there in rajasthan so here also we can find the settlements of mesolithic people next is sarai nahar rai it is there in uttar pradesh next is lekha lekha hiya it is also there in uttar pradesh so all these things are all these sites are belonging to mesolithic period right if we see the sites in uh, eastern india mayurbhanj district of odisha here also we can see next is siddhantpur in odisha it is also falls in odisha here also we will see the evidence of mesolithic people right 
so this is about the mesolithic age the peculiar feature is they are they were living a semi nomadic life peculiar feature is microliths development of microliths and we will see the crude form of rock art right so these are the peculiar features right so neolithic age if we see so uh, the period between 7000 years to 1000 years before now that is known as the mesolithic age so uh, many parts in the indian subcontinent different parts were experiencing this uh, we can say neolithic age uh, at the same time let's say in the south india during this period of time let's say people were experiencing the neolithic era so at the same time only this region north western region their indus valley civilization is flourishing so you have seen broadly it falls between 300 to 1750 bc indus valley civilization period so at one side people have advanced in some regions and they were already exp experiencing the bronze age in this uh, era i mean area in some parts of the country let's say in the western part in the eastern part and in some parts of the southern part uh, part still people were in the neolithic age only i mean they were still living in the stone age only so one thing you have to remember here is uh, if we come to the indian subcontinent itself uh, leave the world the entire world in the EV indian subcontinent itself so at a different time periods people were experience uh, experiencing or people were in different kind of ages stone ages right so this thing uh, you need to remember this i mean whatever the age or change in ages it did not occur uh, at the same time in all over the indian subcontinent so various regions different regions they were experiencing changing technology change in the we can say ages at different slightly different time periods right so neolithic age peculiar features if you see rise of agriculture so people have started practicing crude form of agriculture right so this is them so this agriculture it also helped settled lifestyle so set permanent settlement so whenever we do agriculture then only we can kind of live at a particular place otherwise if we are doing hunting and gathering so the persons i mean people people who are uh, doing hunting and gathering they have to continuously move from one place to another place because after a particular period of time the resources in that i mean place will be exhausted so they have to move to move to another place right so apart from that another peculiar thing happened is that is domestication of animals so the domestication of plants is required so that agriculture has to be practiced and the domestication of animals has also taken place right so they have uh, domesticated animals like cattle sheep goat and uh, possibly pig also they have domesticated and the plants if you see what uh, what all the plants they have domesticated wheat barley rice millets pulses and cotton so see, see cotton is it is there from see from the since ages so all these plants have been domesticated by the neolithic age right so technology if you see here the we can say latest development is polished stone uh, tools so they were using polished stone tools so in the mesolithic case the peculiar feature is microliths here they were using polished stone tools right so we can see here the emergence of pottery also right <clears throat> so the intervention of pottery is another hallmark of the neolithic pe uh, neolithic people so with that uh mainly pottery was used to i mean pots were used to store water right so earlier uh, during the i mean uh, earlier stone age i mean old stone age or uh, middle stone age people had to live close to the water bodies also because they do not have the storage facility but with the development of pottery with the uh, with the invention of pottery now they can a uh, kind of live a distance away from the water body because now they can carry and store store water at their living places 
so this has also been made possible right apart from storing water so they have uh, the pot, pots have been used for cooking and the transportation of food and other materials also pottery has been used right social structure if you see so people have have had a settled communities so they have settled communities so with the rise of agriculture people began living in permanent settlements near water sources and fertile lands here division of labor has uh, further refined so uh, with some indiv individuals specially practicing agriculture so this is uh, this has happened if you see the art and culture so here we will get the limited evidence of art and architecture right <clears throat> So, if you see the Mito Mesolithic tradition, we, we will see rich rock art there. However, in the uh, Neolithic period, people have had a settled lifestyles and they were kind of having their crude, own crude settlements. So, here art is, art might not survived, though they have practiced art, it might not have survived because these man-made shelters, they will destroy within a few uh, span of time. So that is the re reason we are not getting any evidence of art here, right? So here uh, we can see certain few uh, sites they have yielded terracotta figurines. Te terracotta figurines are they are made of clay. So burnt clay is known as terracotta. So some sites have given us this burnt clay. Uh, we can say figurines, right? Possible emergence of rituals can also be seen here whatever the ex excavations we have done and uh, based on the evidence we will see some evidence of ritual practices all right so shelter if you see we can see permanent dwellings like people built more permanent dwellings using mud stick mud brick wood and locally available materials such as uh, leaves from the leaves from the uh, plants basically they were having a thatched roof Thatched roof with mud brick walls. Right. Right. So this is the point I was mentioning. The Neolithic age did not occur uh, uniformly across the subcontinent. So the development of agriculture and a settled lifestyle uh, they likely varied depending on the region and its ecological conditions. So just now I was mentioning the period. Uh, sorry, the region the northwestern region it has witnessed the neolithic neolithic age somewhat earlier so after that the people in other regions of the subcontinent they have witnessed the neolithic age right. so sites if we see first we will see the indus valley civilization sites so the sites like mehargad uh, and nava and nevasa in maharashtra they have i mean later First, they have witnessed the, we can say, Neolithic age. And gradually, they have transformed into Indus Valley civilization. So, they have become part and part, parcel of the Indus Valley civilization. So, gradually, they have developed and, it, I mean, become the more and more urban-centric. And they have kind of become the urban culture that is Indus Valley civilization. Right. So, South Indian sites, if you see, Pikli Hall, it is there in Karnataka. So here we will see the pit dwellings, ash mounds and the ground stone tools and the pottery indicating a settled agricultural community here. Next is Hallur, it is also there in Karnataka. So it is a distinctive, it is a distinct, a distinctive uh, black and red ware pottery alongside evidence of a Neolithic settlement can be found here. Next, another site is Vatkal. It is there in Telangana. So, it is also one of the Neolithic sites. Eastern India, if you see, Chirand in Bihar, uh, Dadupur in West Bengal. These are the Neolithic sites in the eastern part of the country. Right. So, these are the, uh, this is about the Stone Age and the three categories of the Stone Age. Uh, old Stone Age, Middle Stone Age and New Stone Age. And these are the development. Right. So now we have to understand another peculiar feature uh, in the development of we can say prehistory period that is the age of megaliths or the megalithic age. So broadly this can be 
this kind of we can say a uh, practice can be seen between the 2500 bce to 200 bce right right so megalithic age though a not specific period like paleolithic or neolithic era it refers to a wide spread practice of building impressive monuments using large stones so we will see different kind of building of different structures uh, by using large stones so generally these large stone structures were built around honor around the burials so mostly we will find found the, find them around the, in and around the burials these are majorly broad and large stone structures built by the people right so that particular phase is known as the age of megaliths right right so here if we see the uh, structures so most defining characteristics of megalithic age is the construction of megaliths i mean the structures with large boulder stones large stone monuments so these uh, uh, structures can be divided into various forms like dolmens menhirs and uh, barrows so these are barrows are the burial mounds often made with earth and stones sometimes containing uh, megalithic chambers right so this is the thing. right so there are certain regional variants also allow, are also specific types of styles of megaliths vary depending on the region in india so southern india has a rich tradition of meg megalithism with a high concentration of dolmens and menhirs central and eastern india if you see they have megaliths show causing some uh unique variations so it is varying from region to region so function if we see the function of megaliths is uncertain right so still it is a subject of debate still it is remaining a subject of debate they were likely used for a combination of functions including burial practices so some of the megaliths have have been found on and around the burial so around this big big boulders have been kept like this so some of the functions of these megaliths were these next are uh, commemoration to remember certain things so they might have serv uh, served as the memorial memorials for important individuals or importance next is uh, ritualistic significance some megaliths might have been associated with specific rituals or astronomical observations right construction technique so they have employed very impressive engineering technique so despite lack of sophisticated technology the construction of megaliths required considerable planning effort and possibly community collaboration all right so this we can say large stones were transported shaped and positioned using techniques that are still being studied so this megaliths crudely we can link with the building of pyramids so still pyramids are way ahead way forward when it comes to technique designing engineering everything so they are marvelous however we crudely connect the building of megaliths crudely we can cover i mean connect them to the building of pyramids in the egypt so somehow people had some um, we can say connections in the entire world though there was not proper communication there was no communication at all so we can say pattern of development in all the regions of the uh, globe though there were i mean some people were advancing little bit earlier and some people were advancing little bit lower however the stages of development st development if we see so still we can find a pattern across the globe across the world in all the regions like uh, who whoever have the civilizations earlier civilizations like egyptian civilization sumerian civilization or mesopotamian mesopotamian civilization chinese civilization indus valley civilization or for that matter the ent entire uh, indian subcontinent so we will see a, a similar pattern across the all these civilizations right so if we see the megalithic sites like adi chennaloru in tamil nadu it is one of the earliest and the largest megalithic sites in india right it can it contains various burial structures like 
ऑर्न बरियल्स ऑर्न बरियल्स आर बिग बिग पॉटर पॉट्स मेड बाई आई मीन मेड बाई क्ले सो दो वी कैन सी डोल मीन वी सी एंड ऑल्सो मेन हेयर्स वी विल सी एट आदि चन्नलूर राइट सो हियर एंड नाउ देर विल बी मेन्शन ऑफ आदि चन्नलूर सो ट्राई टू कीप एन ऐ आन दट रीसेंटली आलो सर्ट एंड एक्सकवेशन हाव ई मीन टेकन प्लेस देर सो देर we have kind of found some pottery there uh, it is uh, the news before i think one one and a half year before so these whatever the i mean latest evidence is there from the adi chennaluru some people have said that the earliest civilization has uh, happened in the southern part of the country uh, that to before the indus valley civilization so that type of uh, the article discussed that type of evidence uh, we will see that we will see that and that too there was a mention i mean there was a link between the dna of of the people i mean whatever the we can say fossils human fossils identified here and there is a link between the fossils of indus valley people ibc people so some uh, we can say historians find out that the dna of these people is similar matching most of the time so i mean Uh, it is a controversial topic also so uh, till now we believe that there is a theory called aryan invasion theory aryan invasion theory i mean aryans who were the people who were living in the central asian region they have come to india and they have driven the people who were living there and they came forward and they became the dravidians and the people who came uh, from the central asia they kind of became the north indians so that kind of theory was doing rounds so whatever the claims made by the uh, the recent recently with the help of the dna profiling of the fossils found out here so i mean some historians have said that there is not much difference between the dna of that indus valley people and uh, the uh, whatever the evidence that has been found out from here so the in this way Uh, what happens is the aryan invasion theory or the migration of the aryans that that is completely negated right so that thing is going on right adi chennaluru next is porkulam this site is in kerala so it is it is known for distinctive megaliths including corridor entrances a feature not as commonly seen in other south indian megaliths next another site is hampi karnataka all right so hampi also boasts of megalithic monuments like menhirs and dolmens uh, predating uh, back to the later empire during the age of megaliths central india if you see pavagad in madhya pradesh and nagda in madhya pradesh these are the important sites when it comes to megaliths and uh, achichgarh it is in vidarbha maharashtra it is also one of the sites of megaliths eastern india if you see girith in jharkhand it is the site of megaliths and mangoli in odisha also one of the other sites here also we can find megaliths right so after that uh, another important area we have to study is the chalcolithic age chalcolithic age so i have said as i have said earlier so this is the transition period between the neolithic age and the bronze age so the peculiar feature here is use of predominant use of copper so predominant use of copper we will see here so briefly we can put this age between 2500 years to right so it briefly can be uh, put in the age bracket of 2500 bc to 1000 bc all right so there are however there are several regional variations so if we see the characteristic features here also we will see the subsistence practices are there uh, so <coughs> continuation of agriculture so whatever the agriculture that has started in the neolithic age that has been continued however uh, that is also practiced for the subsistence purpose only right so they cultivated here also they are cultivated crops like wheat barley rice millet pulses and domesticated animals like sheep goat pig etc uh, technology if you see emergence of metal working 
so this is the peculiar and the characteristic important characteristic feature of chalcolithic age is development of metal working so here defining characteristic feature of chalcolithic age is the introduction of metal working that too in copper particularly sorry copper particularly copper so initially copper was used for small objects and ornaments later over time it developed people developed techniques uh, techniques for casting and hammering copper to create tools and weapons all right so apart from that people were continued using the stone tools the polished stone tools we, which were uh, being used during the neolithic age so settled communities further grown here in the uh, whatever the settled communities were there in the neolithic period they further grown in the chalcolithic age also so art and culture if you see there are regional variations so evidence of art and culture during the chalcolithic age varies depending on the region so some sites have yielded painted pottery terracotta figurines and a semi precious so stone beads right so if you see uh, the development of metal working likely varied across different regions some a- areas might have adopted copper use copper use earlier than others so it is similar to the neolithic period right so this period uh, has witnessed uh, the uh, development of new ceramic styles and technologies right so this is about the uh, chalcolithic age if we see the sites again mehargarh it is the foremost uh, i mean site next is harappa also so harappa harappa and mohenjodaro so before they are turning uh, as the urban centers of indus valley civilization they have gone through the phase of chalcolithic age right so ahar banas uh, culture sites so these cultural complex flourished in rajasthan madhya pradesh gujarat so the sites like gulind uh, balathal and ojiyana they show us evidence of copper tools terracotta figurines and the distinctive painted with the geometric design so this uh, particular region which falls in between rajasthan gujarat and madhya pradesh this site is known for chalcolithic age next is kayata culture sites so they are fi- primarily found in madhya pradesh and along with the chambal river valley these sites show us the upper uh, the use of copper alongside a distinctive style of sturdy red slipped ware with the chocolate designs so sites like iran and mahanwar they offer valuable uh, valuable clues about the chalcolithic age south india if you see imam gaon in maharashtra daimabad in maharashtra they are the sites of chalcolithic age right eastern india if you see chirand in bihar it uh, this uh, sh- site shows the evidence of presence of chalcolithic uh, age south india if, uh, sorry western india if you see somnath so this ha- site has revealed evidence of chalcolithic settlement with houses pit dwellings and artifacts like stone tools pottery and some copper objects right so these are uh, this is uh, about the chalcolithic age and before that we have also discussed the age of megaliths and before we have discussed the stone age so in that we have studied stone age in three parts so basically here li- here try to remember the important characteristic features few characteristic features of each and every age and uh, the associated sites with the uh, those cultures or we can say cultures or ages right so this is it for uh, today thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time until then have a good day